In this video, I would like to define or explain uh, what is default. Now remember that a security interest cannot be exercised unless default occurs. After default, a lender has a legal basis to seize and sell the collateral. Now, the question is, who defines default and what is default? The first thing that you must remember is that there is no statutory definition of default. Default is a contractual concept, and the parties, that is the lender and the borrower, or in the language of secure transaction, um, the lender and the debtor, uh, who, who in most cases is also the obligor, they through an agreement define what would constitute default. For example, the non-payment of uh, a periodic uh, payment uh, might be defined as default. Now it is up to the parties to determine whether n one non-payment or two non-payments, or missing three payments, would constitute default. The parties may also define that default would occur if the debtor fails to insure the collateral. The parties may also agree that the default would occur if the debtor does not maintain the collateral, because non-maintenance of the collateral might uh, diminish uh, its market value. Now remember, the security uh, for a loan is directly related to the value of the collateral. And if the value of the collateral is not maintained, and if it is depreciating or if it is losing value uh, for you know non-maintenance reasons, then the lender's security in the collateral is accordingly weakened. So a lender might have a great interest in defining default, not simply as uh, uh, not paying the periodic payments, but also uh, not insuring the collateral uh, or not maintaining the collateral. Now, you might wonder whether from a lender's viewpoint, uh, the definition of default should be easy to meet or whether it should be a little harder. Now remember, the lender is in the business of making money. The game of the lender is very simple. The lender lends money and charges interest. The lender is not in the business of foreclosure. It is not a good day for the lender when default occurs and the possibility of foreclosure arises. So from a lender's viewpoint, you don't want to define default uh, in an easy manner, that maybe one single non-payment would constitute default. Um, and I think even from a debtor's viewpoint, uh, a single non-payment uh, might not be agreeable as you know, constituting default. Because a person can miss payment for a thousand reasons, uh, technical reasons, uh, given the fact that now, uh, you know, you're making payments by check and the check is lost, or you're making payment by electronic means through the internet, and there's some malfunctioning of the internet. So even though the debtor has every intention to pay, but for some technical or you know, non-intentional reasons, the payment is not made. So you don't want to make, uh, from a transactional viewpoint, you don't want to make default too easy to occur. But on the other hand, of course, uh, you don't want default you know, too difficult to occur. So from both 
viewpoints of the debtor and the lender, uh, defining default is uh, in fact a term of negotiation that the parties must uh, deliberately and prudently define because upon default the security interest becomes exercisable and it empowers the lender, the secured party to take possession of the collateral and even to sell it to get their money 